The University of Salford's major City UK campus has been open for just under a year and a half now. And since it opened, many more budding media students are thinking of coming to Salford to sample its fantastic state-of-the-art media production facilities. Andrew Cooper is the Academic Director of Media City UK, who is joining us this morning to talk about how the Media City UK campus is continuing to improve its media facilities and opportunities for its students. Andrew, thanks for coming in. Welcome. Good now, morning. you're the Academic Director of uh, Media City That's UK. That's right. So what does this job entail? Well, basically, uh, it's my responsibility to cover all of the academic work that we do here at this campus. So that's all the teaching and learning, the research, and wherever that crosses over into commercial as well. Excellent. So have you seen the various media courses improve since the opening of Media City? Oh, absolutely. It's been a, an amazing journey in the 18 months that we've been open. Um, 18 months is you know, it's like no time at all. So did it's you no time that, at all, but yeah. it, it's it, in some ways, you know, it, it's quite a long time to be in. We, we've really put down foundations. Yeah. From day one, we taught a full timetable and we didn't stop. And we've achieved a huge amount in 18 months. How many years um, in the planning did it take to sort of Ooh. move all the courses over and make sure the buildings and the... And right, the if you go back to the very early discussions about yeah. uh, what we might be doing down here at this site, it was, it was about uh, three or four years in the planning. And wow. that obviously that got more intense uh, in the time leading up to the construction of the building, then the fit out inside and then the uh, transition into the building with the, some existing programmes and new programmes as well. So has the campus attracted any um, attention from other universities, nationally and internationally? A huge amount, yes, yes. Nationally, we've had a lot of visitors. Yeah. Uh, well, I can give you an example. Uh, just this week, we've had people from Carnegie Mellon University. Um, we've also got visitors from Malaysia next week coming over. Uh, I've been in touch with people from Auckland University of Technology wow. in New Zealand. They visited earlier last year. They'd so like how are these universities with helping with the development of Meter City? Well, I suppose the best example is RMIT in Melbourne. They're, they're coming Monday and Tuesday next week for a workshop where we'll be designing a joint programme together on digital media and communications. Okay, lovely. Now, obviously, um, there are a lot of companies in Media City UK. There are. Um, so perhaps HP, Adobe, and BT, I've seen, you know, personally, stands for these sorts of companies around. Yes. So are these in a partnership with the University of Salford? They Media are. City? We're working very closely with a, a range of companies. You've, you've mentioned some of the larger ones there. So, for instance, with Adobe, um, some of our undergraduate students and postgraduate students uh, tested their new editing software. Oh, wow. Um, it was only ourselves and CNN that were doing that. I'm very pleased to say the undergraduates broke it within one afternoon, which meant that uh, it had to go away for some adjustments and, and repairs. And that was the yeah. um, uh, student's fault as opposed to the company's fault. No, no, that, that's that. what the test is all about. Oh, right, it was supposed Stressing to actually it break. To the oh, well, it wasn't supposed to break, but the way they were using it oh, right, was okay. so innovative, sure. it put such pressure on it that they had to go away and make some adjustments. So how many of these students got involved with that challenge? Then? It was about uh, 20 altogether, okay. and uh, the postgrads got a much better version as a result of what the undergraduates had been doing. And we ran two competitions, and um, representatives from Adobe, BBC and ITV judged the final outcome, wow. and awards were given. We've also worked very closely with HP. Um, that's a good example, actually, of what we're trying to do here. The, the, the umbrella under which we're operating is media and digital technology, mm -hmm. which is a full spectrum from content production right through technology, applications into business and health. And with HP, they had a particular project where they wanted students to help promote a desktop, Z1, to small businesses. So we put together five teams, and each of those teams had a student from business, from media, from computer science, and from art and design. And uh, the five teams produced, in the end, nine videos, and the winning team, each member, received a thousand pounds and a Z1. Lovely. Hewlett Packard, just as importantly, were absolutely delighted with what they had, and uh, they, they've begun to use those videos internally across that multinational company. Can you often see that the um, students here at Media City are often the sort of flagship students for the, like um, the next generation of media production? Yes, it's it's very much the case that the partners that we work with, and they're not, they're not all large. We have. Um, a unit called the Greenhouse just at the back of our yeah. campus which has a lot of smaller industries and we work very extensively with people beyond this area. They are interested in the next generation talent and if I can make you blush Tom that's you as well. <laughs> <laughs> you are a student here and the work that you're doing today on comic well, the relief facilities are obviously great, you know, we're very, very lucky to be here. The so. facilities are fantastic yeah. but it's all about what you do with them and um, I've, I'm on record already as saying that the journalism students in particular have led the way yeah. and I think this broadcast for comic relief is further example of that. 
Yeah. And I'm absolutely delighted with the way that the students are pushing the limits and the barriers all the time. I can confirm we are definitely pushing the limits. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've said to my colleagues many times it's about following the students. See where you want to go because you're the next generation. You have the innovation, the creativity and the ideas for the future. What is good for me personally is that um, the whole sort of Salford University here, we are in collaboration with the BBC. Uh, we did the Fast Train event, which was absolutely incredible. It was terrific. Uh, we managed it? to get Leah Gooding, the newsroom presenter, in, yes. which was a great opportunity. Yes. So, how do you see, and, and also, ITV is uh, moving in upstairs. Yes, they yes, they're pretty well established now, yeah. So, how do you see companies like you know, BBC and ITV integrating more? future yes. collaborations, how do you see that you know, developing in the future? Yeah, they're, they're slightly different relationships because of the nature of the BBC and the trust. Uh, so we have everything there from high level research partnerships, uh, particularly in the area of acoustics and audio. Um, but we also work on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. on particular projects and uh, we work across the range of departments, so learning, sport, Radio 5 Live, uh, also the BBC Academy and Future Media Technology, the, the research BBC Academy, area. Louise Blythe came in for an interview and she was very sort of uh, praiseworthy of the fitness facilities here. Yeah, so that's a, Louise is working very closely with us. She's right, yeah. Yeah, uh, she's part of a, a steering group for the Salford Media Festival, mm -hmm. which will be next November. And okay. uh, she's been a terrific ally. ITV is slightly different. Uh, they, they don't have a trust that they report to in the same way as the BBC. Uh, they're only recently established here. But obviously we've been working with both of these companies for quite a while before we moved to Media City. We're now operating at a strategic level with them. And uh, with ITV we'll be looking at the power of the big idea in the wow, near future okay. and exploring that further. Uh, we've already produced a couple of films for them as they've moved in. So students have had benefits of that presence from day one really. Lovely. Okay, well, so the final question here, where do mm. you see Media City in five years time? Five years time? Well, for a start it will be a lot, lot bigger. This is the start of a 200 acre site. So it will be expanding and planning right. permission is already in it place. It is already you know, very, very big. So. It is big, but it's going to get bigger. Yeah. Um, I see in five years time that our presence here will be crucial to the way in which education becomes the, the real cornerstone of what's happening at Media City, which will distinguish it from uh, a media business park. I think there'll be a range of companies here across that spectrum, media and digital technology. We'll have a u new University Technical College, and the University of Salford is one of the sponsors for that. And we will be establishing that, that generation of talent that will be coming through. And increasingly, I think that talent will be establishing their own businesses mm -hmm. and driving innovation in ways which will really explode the business models for the future. Thank you, Andy. Thanks for coming in. You're welcome.